In this lesson we're going to be looking at physical quantities and units. These include base quantities and units and derived quantities and units. We could ask ourselves some questions. How fast does light travel? How much do you weigh? What is the radius of the Earth? And at what temperature does ice melt at? We can find the answers to all of these questions by measurement. Speed, mass, length and temperature are all examples of physical quantities. Measurement of physical quantities is an essential part of physics. All measurements require a system of units. For example, how far is 12? Without a unit, this is a meaningless question. You must always give a measurement as a number multiplied by a unit. So, for example, 12 metres means 12 multiplied by the length of 1 metre. Or 9 kilograms means 9 multiplied by the mass of 1 kilogram. But what do we mean by 1 metre and 1 kilogram? Metres and kilograms are two of the seven internationally agreed base units. The base quantities are time, and if you look in your formula sheet, that's given the symbol little t, length, which would be L, mass, small m, temperature, either a capital T or sometimes theta, electric current, I, amount of substance, N, or luminous intensity, which isn't used at A level. And each of these seven uh, base quantities have their SI, or System International Unit. The, the time is the second, uh, the meter, M, kilogram, Kg, the Kelvin, capital K, the Ampere, capital A, the mole is the mole, and the candela is CD. Point to note, when you're using units, if the unit is named after somebody, such as the Kelvin or the Amp, they're given a capital letter, and if the unit is not named after somebody, such as the second or the meter, they're just a small letter. These base units I've got definitions that are based on specific uh, physical measurements that can be re uh, reproduced very accurately in laboratories around the world. The only exception to this is the kilogram. This is one, sorry, this is the mass of a particular metal cylinder known as the proto-kilogram, which is kept in Paris. Of course, we use far more physical quantities in physics than just the seven base ones. All other physical quantities are known as derived quantities. Both the quantity and its unit are derived from a combination of base units using a defining equation. For example, velocity is defined by the equation V equals delta S, which is the change in displacement, and displacement is just uh, the distance travelled in a given direction, divided by the change in time. So, because Delta S is a length, which would be measured in metres, and delta T, the change in time, will be measured in seconds. The derived unit for velocity would be the metre per second. A second example would be acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity, so the change in velocity, delta V, divided by the change in time, delta t. And because velocity is already in metres per second, and time is in seconds, as we combine these two together, we get metres per second squared. For the third example, I'm going to use force. Force, F equals MA, which is the mass 
multiplied by the acceleration. So mass would be in kilograms, and as we've already seen, acceleration is meters per second squared. So the kilogram meter per second squared is the derived unit of force in terms of its base unit, but some of these uh, derived units and are given special names, and for example, force is given the symbol capital N, which is the Newton. So what we can say is that one Newton is equivalent to one kilogram meter per second squared.